Well, we've got this quantity with units, and so, of course, we want to be able to calculate things with it, right? So heat and temperature are related by an equation. And this is the equation. The, the heat is equal to the mass of the object times its specific heat capacity times the temperature change. So that's the equation in words. In symbols, Q for heat is equal to mass times C, the specific heat capacity, times the change in temperature. So without all the spaces, Q equals MC delta T. This, is, this triangle is the Greek letter delta. In science, we use that to symbolize change, so the change in. It kind of looks like an A, though. So sometimes students um, say Q equals M cat. That's one of those tests you have to take, right? M cat um, to help them remember it. When we see this delta, delta is the change. We always take the final minus the initial. So delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. A temperature change can be negative. A negative temperature change means it started at a high temperature and it went to a low temperature. Or it can be positive, it goes from a low to a high temperature. If you, if you get final minus initial correctly, then you'll get the sign on the temperature change correct. C is the specific heat capacity. Um, that's usually going to be in joules per gram degree Celsius. M is the mass of the substance. That's measured in grams. And Q is the amount of heat in joules. So we can do problems like this. Here we're getting more words in our story problems. You find a copper penny in the snow and pick it up. How much heat is absorbed by the penny as it warms from the temperature of the snow, minus 5 degrees Celsius, to the temperature of your body, 37 degrees Celsius? That's somewhat interesting. Um, it says, assume the penny is pure copper and has a mass of 3.10 grams. You can find the heat capacity of copper in table 3.4. So... I've got that right back here, table 3.4. We're going to need the heat capacity of copper. So 0.385. I got lost. Um, so the heat capacity of copper, that's capital C, is 0 0.385. The units there, we want to write them in a vertical fraction. Joules per gram degree Celsius. And then let's pull out those other, other numbers in there. We've got minus 5.0 degrees Celsius, and we've got 37.0 degrees Celsius and we have 3.10 grams. This is an equation that, I'm sorry, this is a problem that requires an equation. Um, we're, we've got a temperature change and we're asked to calculate the amount of heat, so we're going to use Q equals MC delta T. Q equals MC delta T. So they're asking us to find the heat. How much heat? That's the question. Well, heat has the symbol Q. Don't ask me why. I have no good explanation for that. So we've got this equation. That's great. Q is what we need to solve for. So we need to find these things. The mass, the specific heat capacity, and the change in temperature. So over here, oh, we already looked this up because I didn't want to jump back and forth too much. So there's the specific heat capacity. Um, which of these is the mass? 3.10. The 3.10 grams. So even if you didn't um, see the word mass of up here, uh, gram is a unit of mass, so we should be able to recognize that. And then we need, so we've got mass and specific heat capacity. We need change in temperature. Well, we have two temperatures. So this is a temperature. And this is a temperature. One of them's the final temperature, one's the initial temperature. 
So the initial temperature is the temperature that the copper penny started at. So it was in the snow. It started at minus 5. So that's the initial temperature. And it warms up from that to the temperature of your skin, your hand, uh, which so 37, that's its final temperature. So we can calculate the change in temperature. It's Tf, the final temperature, minus the initial temperature. So the final temperature is 37.0 minus the initial temperature. The initial temperature is negative 5. People do weird things when they have two negatives. Just stick it in your calculator. It'll do it fine. So this is going to end up being 42.0 degrees Celsius. 37 minus a negative 5 is the same as 37 plus 5, so 42. So I can plug these numbers in. Always, always, always include the units. So the mass, 3.10 grams. Specific heat capacity, 0.385. Joules per gram times degrees Celsius, and the change in temperature, 42.0 degrees Celsius. Look at what happens with the units. We have gram in the numerator and gram in the denominator. That's convenient. Here's degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius. They cancel out. That's why the specific heat capacity has such a weird unit, so that it'll cancel with the grams and the, and the degrees Celsius. So then we use our calculator. 3.1 times 0.385 times 42. How many sig figs should that have? So this one's got three, and that one's got three, and this one's got three. Here we're subtracting, and this had one decimal place and one decimal place, so this had one decimal place, three sig figs. So 50.1 joules. Did I do that right? Any questions? Yes? Why is it joules and not grams? For the final unit? Yeah. Why is it joules and not grams? Because the gram canceled with the gram here. And, and this is what we are hoping for because Q is heat and heat is measured in units of energy. Any other questions? Yes? So, um, when it comes to the, the TF and TI, do you mm -hmm. have those figures when it comes down to running? Yeah, you should consider the, the, the sig figs when you do the, the delta T, usually what will happen there is that the, the temperatures will be measured to the same decimal place. And so the only thing you have to watch out for is, you know, if you do this on your calculator, your calculator is going to show you 42. It's not going to say 42.0 because your, your calculator doesn't understand sig figs. So you need to recognize that you have to put the point zero in there. Um, I want you to do your best on sig figs, and that's why I'm always talking about them and illustrating the process. The most important thing on a, on a problem like this, though, is being able to do the rest of it. That, that's the focus. Any other questions? Here's another problem. The temperature of a lead fishing weight rises from 26 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius as it absorbs 11.3 joules of heat. What is the mass of the fishing weight in grams? So we could say, well, why don't you just stick it on a balance and weigh it, right? 
and I accidentally s switched. Yeah, I'm this, and I'm getting tired. Well, so we read the problem. Let's take the numbers and write them down. So 26 degrees Celsius and 38 degrees Celsius and 11.3 joules. And the question is, what's the mass? Well, um, what equation are we going to need? We have heat. We have things changing temperature. This isn't a temperature conversion. And it's not, all, it's not a dimensional analysis problem either. It's a heat capacity problem. So Q equals MC delta T is the equation we're going to use. So what sense can we make of these numbers? These are temperatures, right? So let's label those. So this is a temperature, and this is a temperature. Which one is the initial temperature? The 26. It goes from 26 to 38. So this is the final temperature. This 11.3 joules is that Q, M, C, or delta T? It's Q. Q is the heat. I would have made it H. I'm sorry. It's Q. So Q is the heat. And it even says absorbs 11.3 joules of heat. So that's a clue also. And we're asked for the mass. So we're trying to find M. What else do we need here? We need the heat capacity. So this is a lead fishing weight. It's made out of the element lead. So we have to go look it up. Yeah, 0.128. So we go look it up. Lead has a specific heat capacity of 0.128. So C equals 0 0.128. The units are important. Joules per gram degrees Celsius. Now, this has delta T in it, not TI and TF. So we got to calculate delta T. Delta T equals the final minus the initial. So final temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. Let's subtract the initial temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. Is that 12? Yeah, 12 degrees Celsius. Subtracting, each of these is to the nearest one in the ones place, and so this is also in the ones place for sig figs. Now, it is possible to take all my numbers here that I've found and stick them in here and then rearrange it. I don't recommend that. Uh, things can kind of get ugly sometimes. It's better to rearrange it when you just have letters. And, and some of you struggle with this, um, and so I'll try to demonstrate, and if it's still not making sense, please ask me during lab, and I can help you with this. So we're trying to get, um, we're trying to get M by itself. So we need to get rid of the C and get rid of delta T. The way we get rid of C is to do the opposite. So here we've got mass times the specific heat capacity. So I want to divide by it. So if I divide by the specific heat capacity, then those guys cancel out. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So I'm going to put C over here. And I also need to get rid of delta T, so I'm going to divide this side by delta T. Those guys are going to cancel out. And then I divide by delta T over there. Now I've got this ugly mess, so I'm going to rewrite it, and the mass is equal to Q divided by C times delta T. Now I can put my numbers in. Q is 11.3 joules divided by the specific heat capacity, 0.128 joules over grams degrees Celsius times the change in temperature, 12 degrees Celsius. So 
So 11.3 divided by 0.128 divided by 12. How many sig figs? Two. When we're dividing and multiplying, we look at the number of sig figs. So three sig figs, three sig figs, this guy only has two. So 7.3 Five, seven. Um, what happens with the units is the joules cancel and the grams cancel, and I end up with 1 over 1 over G. So it gets flipped over, and I get grams. So it rounds to 7.4 grams. Any questions? Can you get your calculator to give you that answer? The thing that sometimes happens is you see that this is multiplied. And so you'll take 11.3 divided by 0.128 times 12. That's going to get you the wrong answer. I can prove it to you mathematically if you want me to, um, but I won't do it in lecture. If you really want to multiply those, then you need to put parentheses around them or brackets if you're going to multiply. What I do is I take this number, I divide by that one, and I'm dividing by this one. Um, so however you want to think about it, you should be able to come up with 7.4 as your answer. If you're having trouble, please ask me, okay? Any other questions? How much do we have left here? Oh, cool. Look at that. We've got 10 minutes to finish this one. Okay, so here's another example. A 328-gram sample of water absorbs 5.78 times 10 to the third joules of heat. Find the change in temperature for the water. If the water is initially at 25 degrees Celsius, what is its final temperature? So we read through it. We write down our numbers. 328 grams. 5.78. Times 10 to the third joules and 25.0 degrees Celsius. Pull the numbers out, write them down. You can do that, and then we can work on figuring out what do they mean. So we've got heat, we've got temperature changing. This is that same equation Q equals MC delta T. What are they asking us to find? Well, first they're asking us to find the change in temperature, right? Change in temperature. So that's delta T. So this time we're solving for delta T. So we need Q, we need M, and we need C. Well, this is the mass, right? That's the unit of mass. This is a 328 gram sample. It doesn't use the word mass, but gram is a unit of mass. So that is the mass. And it says it absorbs this much heat. Q is heat. So that's Q. We're, we're trying to find delta T. This temperature, what is that temperature? That's the initial temperature. So it says that. The water is initially at 25 degrees Celsius. So that's T initial. What else do we need? Specific heat capacity. So we look that up. Specific heat capacity for water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. You'd look it up in a table. I just... I have used it too many times. So we're looking for delta T. I now have Q, M, and C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange my equation before I stick all those numbers in. So I want to get rid of M, so I divide both sides by M. The M's on this side cancel out. And I want to get rid of C, so I'm going to divide both sides by C, and the C's on this side cancel out. Delta T equals Q over MC.
delta, my deltas end up being funny, delta t, q is 5.78 times 10 to the third joules, always, always, always write the units, and the mass down there should be 328 grams, and the specific heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Always good to check out the units. Joules cancel joules. Grams cancel grams. We're left with 1 over 1 over degrees Celsius, which is degrees Celsius. So we've got 5.78 EE3. Divided by 328, divided by 4.184 equals. How many sig figs? Three. So 4.2117, and the unit would be degrees Celsius. If you didn't come up with four, do this again with me, and we'll use parentheses this time. 5.78 EE3 divided by, open parentheses, 328 times 4.184, close the parentheses, press equals, 4.2117. Either method is fine. Use the one that makes more sense to you. Okay. So that is the change in temperature. How do we figure out what the final temperature is? Yeah, we add the initial temperature. The other way we can think about this is, so we have that equation, the change in temperature equals the initial temperature minus the final, I don't know what happened there, final temperature. So. If I want to find the final temperature, I'd have to subtract Ti from both sides. That's one way to do it. And I would end up with negative Tf equals delta T minus Ti. Or I can multiply all of that by negative 1 and find that the final temperature equals the initial temperature plus the change. However you come at that. So the final temperature equals the initial temperature, which was 25.0 degrees Celsius, plus the change in temperature, 4.2117 degrees Celsius. Calculator is telling me 29.2117. What do I do with the sig figs there? I'm adding, so I have to think decimal places. So this has one decimal place, that has two decimal places. I round to the smaller number of decimal places, so I round to the one decimal place. So the answer of final temperature is 29.2 degrees Celsius. The answer of the change in temperature is 4.21 degrees Celsius. Any questions?